I'm Sadia and I am here because because it's an atheist collective. <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Hamza and I'm here because it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm Taylor, uh, I'm from New York and I am here because I believe in the separation of church and state. Woo! <laughs> I'm Alice, I'm from Massachusetts and I'm here because I don't believe in God. <laughs> Hi, I am um, Idil from Montauk College. I'm here because I am tired of religion seeking money. The proposed GOP budget is so bad that even Catholic bishops have officially protested. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops never endorses any one candidate or political party, but there have been times when it has expressed concerns on a variety of social issues, such as the case with the budget cuts proposed by Republican Vice Presidential Candidate Paul Ryan, who managed to get the Catholic group a bit hot under its Roman collar. Ryan's draconian cuts prompted the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops to write numerous letters to Congress in order to formally express its opposition. In a letter set to Congress last April, the bishops wrote that the cuts will hurt hungry children, poor families, vulnerable seniors, and workers who cannot find employment. It goes on to say that these cuts are unjustified and wrong. Another letter sent to every member of the House of Representatives noted that deficit reduction and fiscal responsibility efforts must protect and not undermine the needs of the poor and vulnerable people. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops have noted that the GOP budget fails at this most basic morality test. It's interesting to note that the spokesman chosen to make these official statements is Monsignor Stephen Blair of Stockton, California. Stockton has felt the financial pinch more than most American cities as it has become the largest California city to file for protection under Chapter 9 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code last July. Bishop Blair knows from his own experience that the proposed budget cuts will hurt Americans who need the help the most. But the vice presidential candidate sees things differently. He believes that he is actually helping the poor by eliminating their dependence on the government. More than 60% of Ryan's budget cut proposals touch programs for low-income Americans. Blair concluded that you have to determine what your priorities are. If your only priority is to cut the budget, that approach is inadequate. Has Ron Paul been sent by God to help Americans? Late last month, the Republicans officially nominated Mitt Romney during their national convention in Tampa, Florida. However, prior to that gathering, many were distressed by what appeared to be the mistreatment of Ron Paul at the hands of the Republican powers that be. One such person, who felt that the conservative presidential candidate should have demanded that his delegates be counted, was president of the USA Christian Ministries, Pastor Stephen Andrew. Said Andrew, if Republicans nominate Mormon Romney, who thinks Jesus is a created being, the spirit brother of Lucifer, then the Christians should abandon by mass exodus the Republican and Democrat parties and joined the Constitution Party of Ron Paul. Andrew said, God sent Paul to help Americans, but will Americans listen? Andrew went so far as to lay out a seven point list of reasons for Christians to support Ron Paul over the other two candidates whom he called non-Christians. A post-convention perusal of the USA Christian Ministries website gives no indication as to whom Pastor Andrew now endorses since Paul is no longer a viable candidate. The latest legal drug. Associate Pastor of American Religion at the University of Washington, James Wellman, and his co-authors, University of Washington graduate students Katie E. Corcoran and Kate Stockley, have presented a paper at the 107th Annual Meeting of the American Sociological Association. Entitled, God is Like a Drug, Explaining Interaction Ritual Chains in American Megachurches, the paper is based on data gathered in 2008 from 12 nationally representative American megachurches provided by the Leadership Network. Wellman described this kind of religious experience as a new hybrid form of Christianity that's mutating and separate from all traditional institutions with which we usually affiliate Christianity. Noting that megachurch services rarely reference heaven or hell, 
Wellman noted that those with over 2,000 members generally focus on such non-controversial concepts as decency, family, and forgiveness. Wellman commented, how are you going to dominate the market? You give them a generic form of Christianity that's upbeat, exciting, and uplifting. Today, 10% of modern American Christianity is concentrated in megachurches, according to Wellman, who notes that their focus is on the message, things can get better, you can be happy. A woman hasn't been raped if she becomes pregnant. Todd Aiken is known for many things, including being Claire McCaskill's Missouri Senate challenger. Over the years, the Republican establishment turned a blind eye to his connections to the late Dominionist preacher, Rev. D. James Kennedy. The party's leaders also pretended they weren't listening when he said that the heart of liberalism is really a hatred for God. And all was fine when he was seen serving meals at a Chick-fil-A during the company's Appreciation Day event. Nope, none of that seemed to matter to the Republican establishment. However, the wind turned when Aiken recently said on national television, From what I understand from doctors, pregnancy resulting from rape is really rare. If it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to try and shut that whole thing down. Calls asking for him to step down from the race were swift, and they even included a personal plea from vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan. The national party's funding for his candidacy was also suspended. Aiken, however, has refused to step down, insisting that it was, appropriate to recognize a creator whose blessings of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are the very source of American freedom. And part of that message I feel is missing. That's the reason why we're going to continue, because I believe there is a cause here. Atheist Roundtable, a gathering place for rational people. <laughs> Funny pictures and videos! <laughs> Profound atheist quotes. The religious going crazy. The latest news. World domination. Casual discussions. Baby eating. <laughs> the ultimate forum for a lively dialogue. Come join the fun at atheistroundtable.com. <laughs>